had a few people email me and, and tell me that their um, nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium battery packs have already failed and they asked if they could solder in new cells to replace the ones that are bad and yes you absolutely can um, and like I said before you just have to make sure to get um, pre-tabbed cells like this one um, now the advantage of nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium battery or cells is that you don't have to have voltage protection so they don't have the circuitry built in like this trust fire does they don't have the battery packs don't have all this extra circuitry like a lithium ion battery pack does um, because you can you can run them low you can run them you know down and until the drill stops turning or, or the flashlight turns off or you know whatever you happen to be using um, it doesn't it doesn't hurt them to do that um, and so in that way nickel metal hydride and nickel cadmium battery uh, chemistries are, are tougher than lithium ion um, of course the main trade-off is that lithium ion and lithium polymer any any sort of lithium battery chemistry uh, is more more energy dense which means that it holds a lot more uh, the amp hour rating is a lot higher it can hold a lot more energy um, per you know its size and per weight um, than any other um, consumer battery technology so uh, you know but like I said since um, rigid is so conservative um, with their voltage control circuitry you know this thing shuts off probably a lot sooner than it needs to um, you know to be extra safe I suppose I know why they did it they're trying to be extra safe and trying to protect the batteries uh, from going too low but the end result is you just don't get as much uh, charge out of it as, a, as you think you're going to as, as you should be able to um, because the circuitry is too conservative um, they don't balance their cells properly it, it, it just isn't done as well as it could be and the end result is um, you know that this super expensive battery pack that you just bought doesn't last very long and doesn't last per long very long per charge so uh, as far as I'm concerned lithium ion just isn't um, the best option for power tools that's all there is to it I think nickel metal hydrides probably the better option it's tough uh, there's no risk of you know ruining your battery by running it the voltage too low um, you're not going to have a, a sudden fire because you overcharge nothing like that um, and with the new Panasonic technology the battery's going to stay charged for a long long time even if you don't use it uh, that's a plus um, really the only downside to nickel metal hydride um, is that it can develop something of a memory which is why you'll you'll want to run it down every once in a while and do a full recharge. It's called a charge discharge cycle, um, and you know it's not a big deal. Um, it's just a tiny bit of maintenance, and you've got a battery battery pack. So, um, moving on, let me show you what I've done. Um, being the guy who always wants to modify things, so instead of soldering in new 650 18650 cells. Here's what I did. Let me remove this battery pack for you and I'll show you. Okay. This was stuck in my hedge trimmers actually. So here's this extremely modified, heavily hot glued <laughs> um, battery pack. This is this is my special adapter, so this goes from rigid to um, uh, Ryobi type battery so it's all hot glued together and I just I wired or I soldered in the connector so it, I can interchange batteries but here's um, I bought this ruined rigid battery pack off eBay for a couple bucks and I took it apart and I put in a 5s uh, lithium polymer battery so this this lithium polymer battery is designed for uh, it's a hobby type battery made for airplanes or helicopters or something but because it's 5S um, which I wrote on there I wrote the date I put it in um, it gives about 18 volts on average 
fully charged is probably over 20, and when it's running low is probably 16 or so. But um, you know, so that averages out to about 18. But um, so what I've done is I soldered the battery up to the connectors there, so when it plugs into a, a drill or whatever, um, it's got full power. And then I ran the balance port plug out so I can balance it properly. And then this is the charging connector. And it works really well. Um, of course, the only problem is, you know, you have to be on, you have to stay on top of it and know how long you've ran the tool, um, really listen for changes in, in power drop. So if you're using a drill, or in this case, my head trimmers, if I sense that it's, they're starting to slow down even a little bit, it's time to recharge. You can't run this thing down, you will you will destroy the battery. Um, so you, you kind of have to stay on top of it in that regard. And then my other one, look at this conglomeration here. So this is in my wife's um, vacuum. She uses this a lot and she loves it. But uh, So this is a, a Ryobi battery. Here's another 5S uh, lithium polymer battery that I've installed in here. And this has got the same thing. I just didn't wire it quite the same way. But uh, to charge it, I pull these Dean's plugs apart, like that. And there's your charging port, and there's your balance plug. And it sticks out the end. And you do have to be careful not to puncture this battery. You can cause problems, but, uh, you know, it's probably not going to happen. It's not, not a risk I'm too concerned about. But, um, you know, you get a huge amount of energy density. Um, probably twice what you originally got. Actually, in this case, it was a uh, a NICAD battery pack, so I probably get about four times the energy that I originally got out of this pack. So I think these 5S 5,000 milliamp hour uh, lithium polymer batteries that I put in here probably ran about 50 bucks. Um, so they're they're a little pricey, but you know I'm getting you get for a little bit of extra work you get a lot more energy. Um, than what you could buy in a store. So anyway, for people wondering, that's what I've been doing. Um, I'd love to be able to reuse these. This battery holder would be nice to reuse. I may end up modifying it in some way so that I can put um, uh, unprotected lithium-ion cells in here and then balance them in some way. That'd be nice. But uh, that's probably something for the future. So uh, anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, I love all the feedback that I get. And um, I thought folks might want to have a little bit more info on, on um, how to manage their batteries and why they don't last as long as they should and why they're so expensive and all that. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, sorry for rambling so long. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.